Next event we're going to be talking about is called Sand Creek Massacre and takes place in Colorado. You see that in the arrow. It takes place in 1864. And to a larger extent, it is an extension of what happened at Sand Teen Uprising in 1862. This is two years later. You see the date over here, November 28 to 29, 1864. So the main individual here for the U.S. Army is called John Chivington. The main Native American group here is a Cheyenne. And what happens is because of the Santee Uprising, there were a lot of whites who were afraid to continue living in the Great Plains. Not only that, there were whites who were afraid to migrate to the migrants because of the Cheyenne, the Sioux, and other possible threats of Native Americans. John Chivington, he was an army general. He did not care for um, Native Americans. He believed that God chose him to get rid of him. Well, on May 1864, as you can read on this third bullet point, Chief uh, Cheyenne Chief Black Kettle had actually spoken to a couple U.S. politicians and a couple people from the Army, and they had agreed that neither side won at war. So the Army and the politicians sent the Cheyenne and Chief Black Kettle to Sand Creek, and they told them, you know what, just kind of hang around there, hang out there. And we'll wait until a treaty comes around because they didn't have the power to enforce a treaty. Well, as he is waiting, unfortunately, Chivantine doesn't want to wait. And Chivantine attacks the Cheyenne on November 29, 1864. He attacked his Cheyenne, the Cheyenne camp, when most men were out hunting. So Chivantine was actually a coward. He waited for the men to leave, and then he fired and shot upon women children and the elderly now this picture here that you see it's actually quite interesting because right in this front tent here you see an american flag and that flag that tent tippy is actually that tippy of the chief that we were talking about black kettle the u.s government had given him the flag and had given him a treaty that said so long as that flag is flying in front of your tippy the united states will never attack and not only that you see right beneath the flag there's also a white flag but says that the Cheyenne mean no harm. Well, Chivantine didn't care. He attacked anyways. By the end of this battle, over 130 Native American women, children, and elderly lay dead. And that was another treatment, horrible treatment, of U.S. government, in particular the Army, descending upon the Native Americans. One of those individuals, oh, sorry. This is, uh, again, it gives you a bit, little representation of the Sand Creek Right, this is kind of a creek, not a whole lot going on here. Again, you see the Native Americans. Some of these are young men who were not warriors and as such stayed behind to try to protect the people. But you notice the U.S. Cavalry, they're on horses. They're well-trained. They're well-armed, well-equipped, firing against the Native American people. They were not going to be able to survive. One of these men that was on board this expedition was this guy here on the right-hand side. His name is George Bent. He was half Native American, half, half Cheyenne, half uh, white. And he pleaded with Chivantin to not attack. But Chivantin did it anyways. As such, Mr. Ben here, he actually leaves the army and he joins the Cheyenne in their next raid and was called the Fetterman Massacre. This also takes place two years later after the Sand Creek Massacre in 1864. This is now December 1866 and we're up here in Wyoming. And it's known, it's part of the massacre takes place here at the Bossman Trail. The trail was used by people who were lured to the Idaho and Montana Hills to search for gold. And that was a problem that all that land that the trail covers was used by the Lakota, the Cheyenne, and the Sioux, and the U.S. government had promised them that nobody was ever going to disturb them. Now you have all these people, gold seekers, searching that land. And what happens is some of the Sioux, the leader there was crazy for, he actually goes to the fort where Fetterman is at. He lured some of the soldiers out of the, out of the camp, and then at that point, the Native Americans attack. At the end of attack, 90 U.S. troops lay dead in what at that point was the worst defeat by a Native American upon the U.S. Navy, uh, or U.S. Army. Two years later, the U.S. Army doesn't want and the U.S. government doesn't want to deal with all these disturbances anymore, so they actually close the trail. Again, up until that point, that was the worst defeat, but we'll see in 10 years that that takes another turn for the worst as well. And we'll stop here one more time.